We're here today on the Atlantic coast of Florida and I've gathered together all the Kobe fishermen I have fished with in the past. We got Captain Scott Lum from Canaveral. We got Captain Austin from Virginia. We got Dennis from Germany slash Australia. We got Carl Slob City from Palm Beach. And we got Captain Preston from Destin, Florida. And you got me, you know, I'm, I'm just Josh. So, and I'm here. <laughs> so we're gonna be targeting, this is the Cobia Challenge. We got all kinds of live bait. We got shrimp, crabs, pilchards, thread fins. We got bucktails, we got chuggers. We got everything covered. What do you guys think? You think we're gonna get them? Oh yeah. I yeah, think we're gonna get them. Hopefully. Someone will. <laughs> we got so much Kobe we'll knowledge on the, the Kobe are just gonna come to the game. boat yeah. because there's so much Kobe <laughs> yeah. knowledge on this boat right now. I mean, there's, it's insane. I think they're gonna be scared of us, man. They're gonna be scared of us. Yeah, I know, there's knowledge and then there's bull sharks. So. Yeah, <laughs> so the bull shark, we're pulling Kobe off bull sharks, not easy. What's the rules? Because if, if, if one gets eat, is that person eliminated? So it's gonna, it's gonna be it's not it has to be It has to be legal though. Yeah, like if, if, you, if you lose a 60 pounder, if he gets eaten, are you eliminated? You're done. You're done? You're done. You, may be swimming. Right. you may be swimming home? Yeah. All right. You guys heard it. All right, so let's do this, guys. You ready? I'm ready, let's man. Go, man. Let's go. Pound it for good luck. Pound Absolutely, it, pound it, pound it, pound it, pound it, pound it. Let's go. Fish on! Get him in, get him in, get him in, get him in, get him in. I got it, I got it, I got it. Here. Here. Just hold him up for the camera, dude. There's a big one right there, dude. Three of them. That's a nice, that's a nicer Kobe right there. He's on you. 20 pounder. Oh! He's gonna hit it! He's gonna hit it! He ate it! He ate it! Yes! We got him! Big Kobe! Big Kobe! Woo! Get him in, get him in, get him in, get him in, get him in. Get the gap! Here, 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 here. Where's the gap at? Yeah, yeah. Where's yeah. the gap at? Where's that? Where's, where's my gap at? Oh, it's time to get this thing out of here. Yeah. He's trying to get the boat. Yeah. Woo! First legal fish in the boat, baby. Hey. Yes. What? Dude, hold him up to the camera. Oh, we got a Kobe in the boat. Hold on, hold on, hold on. First Kobe. He, First one under he can't even. He can't even get, uh, hold this fish up, guys, because he wants to get another one right now. There's more Kobe on the boat. What do you think, Preston? You like that? Pelchard, Pelchard. Woohoo! All right, here, let me put him in there. Right. So everybody's everybody's got their own technique going on. We got crabs, we got shrimp. I threw out a throat hook pilcher commercial style, and he piped it instantly. 25 pound Kobe, first one in the box. For stuff like this, it's better here. Did you trailer your boat here? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yes. Big Kobe? Yes. What else would it be? Yes, it's a Kobe. Don't play with them, dude. Yeah. Don't play with them, dude. Come on, come on, come on. Come on, front, pull on them. Dude, you got a crank on that thing, dude. Yeah, what do you want me to do? Fuck, come on, on. get up front. Move, move this way. Get up front. You hooked the shark. No, he didn't. No way. No way. It came up to the top. That's a big cobia. Hey, that move, move that remora. No, that's go. a shark. That's a shark. It's a shark, dude. It's a shark. What does it eat? That's a cobia. It's 200 pounds. Well, I bet. No, I think it's a cobia, dude. You think so? Yes. <laughs> come on, bro. Yes. Could be a 60 pounder, dude. That, it, there's no way a 60 pound fish can pull that hard, dude. Yes, no. no. How much drag That's you got on that fish? That's serious pressure, right? bro. Yeah. All right, all right, all right. I'll snap you a little barbie rod here. It's a little, it is a little barbie rod. I wonder, if, I wonder if he hooked a big Kobe and a shark he's got it in his mouth and he's not. Oh. <laughs> Wouldn't eat a thing, would it? I don't think so. You ever not, free gas? can't fight that hard. Yeah, I don't want to fly back here when that thing snaps. Just hold on then. Do you know how much pressure that is? How much pressure is that, Dennis? Man, I have to break him off somehow. You still think it's a cubby oh, there, no, Dennis? No, no, no. Don't, don't break him off, dude. Bite him, bro. Catch him. You might have, have a whole drag. Come on, Dennis. This, this is what you do, bro. Come on. <laughs> what, that? <laughs> she lied. <laughs> so I, Come on. I have Come to break on, this Dennis. thing off somehow. I can't. Oh, I hate getting all that line back now. What happened, Dennis? Did he break you off? Oh, I had to break him off. I knew he got spooled. 
I can't. And my, my reel was so hot. I know, we are, we are, we are. But it looks hey, like we moved a bit. Is there still my fish on it? What's that? Oh! Oh my gosh, dude, this is a 70 pounder. <laughs> <laughs> Where's he at, Dad? I don't see him. 70? Yeah, that's a good one, man. You saw him, right, Preston? Yeah. Preston, you saw him, right? Yeah, yeah, I saw him. Hey, Austin, can you put this back in the live well? Yeah. Oh, you gotta have... that? There he is, there he is. Did you eat it? Yeah, he's safe. Here, you Get him, get him, get him, Scott, get him, get him. I'm letting him eat. Got him. Yes. Woo! It's the biggest and the littlest one, right? That's what we're... So, I get a consolation prize for the smallest cobia, right? Oh my, God. oh my gosh, bro. They don't get much bigger than that guy. Hey, th th this is how I can make it look really big. Yeah, nice, bro. <laughs> That's a cute little fish, man. Look at those markings, man. Cobia, cobia, cobia. Lift him up on the leader. No, no, no. Hey, just, just, just get the net. Get the net. Get the net. Let's measure. All right, we got him in the net. Literally now you can calm down. Look, when you get barely legal Kobe like this one right here, we don't know we're going to measure it. You want to have a net so you can. You don't want to kill him, right? You want to make sure that if it's not legal, you can let it go. By gaffing it, you're going to just mess it up, right? So the net is a huge plus. Dennis, let's put a fish in the boat. We don't know if it's legal. Let's, uh, let's measure them. That's not legal, dude. No. Nope. Not legal. He's barely. That's a good well, he, thing we're going to let him go. Yeah, that's good thing sticking with the gap. He's hooked in a good spot, right? Yeah. 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 There's going to be a release. Here he goes. Mark. Nice job, Dennis. Nice job. Right on. Two unlegal ones. Illegal ones. We got four cobia so far, one keeper, one with just short and two little dinks. We saw some giants, they were here for like five seconds and they left. It's about a 25 knot wind today. It's not the most ideal conditions, but we're still grinding it out here. We're gonna see some big fish. We got all day, we got lots of good bait. We got a good feeling we're gonna catch about a dozen cobia today. So Scott, this is how I got my crab here. I got a little split tail, up. I'm sorry, split shot on there. Yeah, I, I like nowadays they make these split shots. I mean, I have some of these that are one and a half, you know, bigger split shots. And uh, the cool thing about that is uh, if, if you're using a barrel sinker, you got to cut the hook off. And then, you know, when stuff happens, like if a fish comes up and he doesn't eat it with the weight, you can pull that off. off. It, yeah. it, it, it really, sometimes it makes a difference between whether the fish will eat it or not. Sometimes they won't eat. Uh, the bait, whether it's a live bait or whatever, with a weight on it, you know, no, it right. really needs it to be. Changes the presentation. Well, it also makes the the bait um, to where when the fish comes up to it, it it'll it'll flee. It can't do that with that weight. Ah, and and the, the fact that the fish takes off, yeah. I've seen the fish the, the 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 when the bait takes off, the 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 cobia will light up. That's actually a good point. So the weight hinders the co uh, the bait from taking off naturally. Same thing with a large handpicked shrimp. You know, I keep a rod with one with a weight and one with uh, one with a, just a hook. And a lot of times, the one with just the hook, the, the, the big giant live shrimp is, is swimming. Kobe yeah. comes near it, you see it snap backwards, and then he pounces it. Just like the triple tail. Yeah. So, Carl, how big is your biggest triple tail ever? 49.3. So, the rule record is 42. Was it 42.7, uh, Scott? 42 and a half out of uh, Zulu half. land, South Africa. So, he caught one bigger than the world record. Yeah. I was, I was 15, 14, or 15 years old. I was with my father. And we took it over to Blacksmith Market in Manatee Pocket. And the old man came out when I threw it on the scale. He said, young man, he said, where'd you get that fish? I said, Bowie 19. He said, we get them bigger than that in the nets all the time. He said, that's the biggest one I've ever seen caught on hook and line. I've seen some giants come out of uh, nets in Venezuela. You know, uh, how big? I mean, over, you know, 35, 40 pounds, you know, <laughs> I, I didn't, uh, I saw him come through the fish house where uh, I sometimes go. Yeah, I mean, he was Panama and in, uh, in Venezuela. I was using a strip of manhate on the bottom. I casted it out, and it was a Long Beach pen, 60 pen, and I put it in the rod holder. I had to drag yeah, lock that 60 pound on it. The, the rod holder catches the best, biggest fish all the time. The holder catches more fish than anybody. <laughs> That's a fact. When I'm flounder fishing. The, the, the one that I'm not messing with, 
That's the one that gets hooked. You saw him, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah, he's got him. He's got him. Oh, yeah, baby. Oh, look at these come on, come on, get him in, get him in, get him in. Get, 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 get the gap, get the gap, get the gap, get the gap. Come on, Austin, come on, Austin. You got him, baby. Pump him, pump him, pump him. Don't let that engine get him. Yes. Oh, it's a nice Cobia. Oh, it's a big one, dude. Oh, it's a big one. Get him, get him, get him. Come on, Austin. You got him, baby. You got him, baby. Get him in, get him in, get him in, get him in. Yes! Woo! Yes! Woo! Guys, look at that right there. We got a new leader, biggest Cobia. Captain Austin. On a jig. On a jig, baby. On a jig. He's a little bloody. He uh, he got gas real hard, guys, but nice fish to Austin. Congrats, bro. Ready? He's bigger, dude. He's bigger, bro. He's smaller. Get out of here. Smaller. We'll weigh him, bro. You can have it bigger. I don't even care. Cobia! Cobia on! Cobia on! I got the guy. I got the guy. Got it? Fall on, fall on. Get the net, get the net, get the net. Get the net. Oh, God, man. I don't think it's a Cobia. What? Is it a Cobia? Is it a Bonita? Gaff him, dude. Blue runner. Big, big blue runner. Put him on the stringer. Put him on the stringer, dude. Yes. Oh, he's got Kobe on him, dude. Hey, where? Hey, shark underneath the boat, he's got Kobe on him. Oh. Dude, that's a giant. What is that? That's a big bull freaking bull, bull shark. That's a 600 pound bull shark, dude. Yep. He's loaded, bro. If we lose the stringer, we'll lose all the sharks. We can't lose. Hey! Watch your watch your watch your stringer. Dude, you need more, you need more rope. Someone, somebody loosen that rope up for him, please. You Why can't get to pull the whole rope? thing up. Drop it down. Drop it down. Let it sink. Oh, hey, oh, hey, 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 hey! Oh, we just lost everything, dude. We just lost everything. Grab, 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 grab that, grab that. Oh my gosh, dude! Oh my gosh! <laughs> <laughs> grab it, dude. <laughs> oh, he just attacked the camera. So something we do back home when the uh, when the Kobe are being finicky, we're actually messing with the fish right now that that's been swim past our jigs, not really eating. You just take any old fin fish, cut a nice strip. You do it with squid as well. Take a nice strip, kind of like that. Just tip your bucktail. Put it right on the back of your bucktail. You know, adds a little bit of flash, adds a little bit of scent. Uh, I mean, it's it, 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 not a guarantee, but it definitely helps with the situation. Makes your bucktail at least have a little bit of scent. So, good technique I use, and it sometimes changes the days for us. <laughs> oh, you got at least one. Oh, it's a nice one. We're going to eat him, dude. <laughs> That's funny. That's an eater, bro. Yes. Bring, give me that reward, bro. That, that, that's going to be cooked with a cobia. That's funny. <laughs> Be Good idea. Cobia. That's a beautiful remor. Oh my gosh, dude. That's dinner. All right, put them on the box. <laughs> the Cobia challenge, if you can't tell, it's incredibly rough and 30 mile an hour wind. It's miserable. In the words of Austin, just miserable. Okay? He's been talking about how miserable Virginia is and how it's snowing and 40 mile an hour winds. I mean, it's just, it's, he brought his weather down here. I don't know how that happened. Whenever I pick days with Carl, it's always 16 foot waves and giant. I mean, look at my, my hat's gonna blow off. Seriously. But we, we got five Cobia, two were keepers, and <laughs> me and Presser were the only ones that never caught Cobia. Everyone else caught Cobia, which sucks. It kind of stinks. Dennis caught the most Cobia, caught two. I don't know who caught the biggest, Carl or, or uh, Austin. We're gonna find that out at the dock. But now we're gonna do the fillet challenge. We're gonna see if we got four slot, we got four sides. So we see who can, who can fillet the nice piece of meat. I, I got my money on Scott Lum, but does that include remoras? Yeah, you got filleted remoras too. It's definitely not me because I've never filleted fish. Bennett, you never filleted a fish before? No, I did, but I don't do it regularly. So. All right, all right. So Dennis disqualifies himself. I'm gonna try filleting a fish. So oh, we're gonna get wow. back to the dock right now, guys. It's crazy rough. We're gonna get super wet. Pat the camera away, or start filleting these cobia. Yeah, yeah. How's it? We are back to get the dock. We are gonna do the fillet challenge. Now the rules of this are simple. Whoever has the cleanest fillet with the most meat, that means you miss the least amount of meat, bone, it's bone dry, wins this competition. Now it's gonna be me, Austin, Scott Lum, and Carl. I don't know, I just went completely a random order there, but that's his fillet. We got two Kobe, we didn't get our limit, so we're each gonna fillet aside. You guys ready? Yeah. All right, let's do it, man. Grab a Kobe. Grab a Kobe. Here's here's something that I do Here. right away. <laughs> is I I de slime the fish. I give them a little massage here. I get all that slime off there. And uh, 
it just helps the fish not slide around. Also, you know, I'm short, so if you notice I put a cooler there, it makes it easier for me to get leverage on the fish. Um, so that's just one thing I do. You know, the beginning, I'm not really going deep. I'm just using the, the bones as a guide, you know? So because I'm not going deep, I can start it and see how I'm going straight down that line right there. And I'm just taking my time, you know, I don't, I don't do it in a hurry. So once I get to the tail here, if you notice, now I'm going down. I'm on the other side of the, the spine here. Let me just go ahead and kind of open this. And then, so, so now here's what I'm talking about. The spine is a big, like, finger size thing, you know? So now what I'm doing here is I'm scooping down around. Otherwise, if you go straight, you're going to miss a piece, of, uh, a piece of meat there. Working down the spine here, slowly. Cut this right here. Here is, I mean, I missed a little meat right there, but I, I think I got, I got most of the meat off. Who wants to come judge my, my filet? I missed a little meat right here. But other than that, it's... too bad. Oh, Scott's is the beast, bro. He's so good, dude. Look at that filet, dude. Wait, let's see, let's see. Oh, there's nothing missed there at all. Well, see, this is what I was talking about. Like when dude, you, that's the best filet When you seen. come to the spine, I get to here, I, cl I, I release it. Then I go, I got to go down and scoop out. You know, otherwise, if you go straight, you're going to miss some meat right there. Yeah. The way I do it is I fillet this side and then I, I, I follow the bone normally, this side. Normally I cut through the rib cage and I butterfly it. When I'm done, I'll have two whole sides. Yeah. And then I, there's a little bit of meat there, but I, I didn't miss, I mean, there's there's really nothing right here. Dude, I'm, that, I'm not that, missing that, anything right there. That's an unreal fillet. I mean, it's gonna be hard to beat. It's gonna be hard to beat, what do you think? That's clean right there. That's man. clean, dude. What is in this Kobe's stomach here? What was he eating? I feel like it's all crabs. Yeah, look at that, guys. Crabs. Just greedy. Nothing but crabs. Dude, look, look how many crabs are in there, dude. <laughs> Holy cow. That's, a, that's why we bought crabs, dude. That's a lot of crabs. Scott is just mastering that cubby over there. You got some stiff competition here, Carl. You think yeah. you, can, you, you, you can take Scott? Probably not. No? I'll give him my best shot. All right, here we go. People are like, oh, you cast, you, you throw the cast net so good, I'm gonna let you throw it. Are you clean so well? Yeah, right? <laughs> <laughs> when you have a Jerry Skid knife, that's what happens. Here, use mine. Nice, right? <clears throat> Which one? Clearly, Scott Lum has won the, uh, missed the least amount of meat, but Austin did a pretty good job here, actually, for how quick he did that. I mean, there's, you didn't miss too much meat here, Austin. I, I think I, I might have edged you a little bit. I think I think Carl came in last place. <laughs> Carl definitely came in last place with the uh, miss the meat thing, but you did you did a pretty good job for how fast you did it. For, for in terms of speed, you crushed everybody. That's what it's all about, man. Yeah. Nah, that's not correct. Scott keeps the belly meat right here. He was, he was telling me, and this is what he puts on his cobia jigs. You know, some people don't even bother with his belly meat, but there's meat there's meat here. So why? Of course. Why, why leave it? Good. So, yeah. his dad's a master. Is it master master sushi chef? No, he he's he had a Chinese restaurant for like 20 years. <laughs> what'd you guys what'd you guys uh, eat in there? Everything? Oh. Do you have cobia? Uh, I would bring. You know, clients would ask me, "Hey, where can we get the fish cooked up?" And then I, I started turning them on to my dad, and then people would be like, once once he had he cooked the food, um, they'd call me and they'd say, "Hey, we want to book a charter." And a lot of times it was triple tail. He'd make this triple tail in a black bean sauce. Is it good? And is awesome. And uh, with gar uh, mushrooms, Wait, onions. Are you, are you literally pulling pulling the bones out of? Well, I'm 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 cutting on either side of it, and I'm just pulling them out. Yeah. So you can eat the whole belly meat. Yeah, all the bones will be gone now. Are you serious? Oh yeah. I never even thought about doing that. Have you ever thought about doing that? Isn't that crazy? That's smart, dude. 
I mean, it, seen this it, on the it, camera, guys? Look at this. It, it kind of looks kinda... funny, you know, like, yeah, it like that, really it, it's, it's a little bit mangled, but it's one way to just get the bones it's out. Neat, man. I mean, I know like in cut, salmon I, I and stuff, right they here. use a pair of pliers and they just pull them out, you know? But these uh, are, are kind of embedded a little bit more. See that? Yeah. I never yeah, filleted a remora before, so I'm not sure what to expect here. Put that, put that, put that. Look at, look at, look at that remora fillet, dude. That's kind of weird. Hey, I don't know what, uh, God, that's like right not much water. meat there. I mean, that's like yeah. nothing, man. I, I can't even believe I've wasted my time doing that. Yeah. Of course, that because I pulled that side off, I missed some. This one has got just a ton of meat on it, doesn't it? It's like, feed your whole family with this. Put them on ice, dude. You can use them frozen, bro, right? Cobia challenge is going to continue tomorrow. We caught only two fish today. Well, we caught five fish, two keepers. We're going to hit it again tomorrow. We're going to fish for four hours. It seemed like it was a morning bite today. What do you guys think? Morning bite? Yeah. Yeah. And, get there and, about two hours earlier tomorrow. Yeah. yeah. But once it hit like noon, the bite just was gone. Done. Yeah. Yeah. yeah we, we grinded it out there for the last two, three hours. Didn't see a single Cobia. So tomorrow we're going to come back. Same bait, same place. We got to catch Cobia, dude. We got to, man. Redemption. We got to catch Cobia. So. We'll be back here to be continued. Cobia Challenge, day two. We're out here with all the guys. Same same group again. It's about 20 degrees cooler today. It's a lot windier. And we're out here a little earlier today because it was a morning bite. We got a good feeling we're going to catch some fish this morning. What do you guys think? Oh, yeah. Good feeling, man. You ready? Oh, ready yeah. Ready to freeze your butt off? Yeah. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Get him. That might be legal, dude. Nah, yeah, legal. Okay. legal, no way. Smaller than the one that was illegal. Uh huh. All right, let me get him, bro. Let me get him. Got a Cobia, guys. Not legal? Definitely not legal. But it's still a Cobia. So it's first Cobia of the day. I'm not skunked anymore. Preston, it's up to you now, baby. You're the only one. I mean, and it's not the smallest one either. Scott is still winning that one, but I did get a Cobia. That's all I'm asking. If I catch one more, then I'm tied with Dennis, so I'm gonna keep getting this. I'm gonna get this guy back in the water and try to catch up to Dennis right now. It feels so good to get a cobia in the boat. I mean, it's just absolutely miserable here. Giant waves, 30 mile an hour winds. There's no reason for us to even be out here right now. We were the only boat that left the inlet, so it's just just miserable conditions. But there are some fish here. We got some sharks behind the boat. We're looking for more cobia. We need to get a few more fish for our catch and cook. Where's the net at? That might be legal, dude. That's bigger than the other one. Hold on, one second. Hold on. We're out. Are you ready, Preston? Yeah. Here, get him. Is it legal, Preston? Might be. No, he ain't legal. He ain't legal? No. Cubby number two right there. I don't think he's legal. Look at this guy. He's got a little scar right there. He's either been hooked before or been attacked by a shark. He's close. 33. 32 and a half. 32 and a half. 32 and a half, wow. 33. 33 to the shortest part of the tail. Two cobias. Guys, that, that fish was an inch short of being legal. Normally I let those little fish go right away. I like to keep 25 pounders, but so the fork? gotta catch fish. So you like jigging it fast? I like going a little faster, yeah. A little faster, yeah. yeah. What about you, uh, Austin? Uh, usually I do it pretty slow, but I mean, it, it, there's certain scenaries where fast. Everybody's different. I, I like it slow though. Usually. Well, no, I, I'm not fishing a swivel. I'm fishing and when you a see a big, client, you know, when a client sees a fishy, swivel, I won't have uh, jig, like, like you throw it out, you let the jig sink. Yeah. Oh, yeah. How long do you, yeah. let, do, you let, do you let them eat it for before you guys, Drag, uh, for yeah. a client? You know, I mean, it's not a, I'll let it go with a jig for me, it's not about baby. how long to eat. It's, you don't want to set the hook when they, when you see them physically eat it, you, you know, you won't, I, I personally like to just, Cast out there when I see them on it, I just let them do his thing, and then until I come tight on them, that's when I set the hook. Yeah, exactly. Because, dude, yeah. You, you've had it where they the, the fish eats it, grabs like maybe the tails, you set the hook, and buck, yeah, exactly. you got a fish on, fish on, fish on. Kobe on. That's a bigger Kobe, guys. That's a big Kobe. Move that line. I hear you, bro. Did he just get sharked? Nah, he was a shark in the beginning. 
Uh, take it. No, maybe not. Maybe not. Maybe this is. Issues is not on the surface. But it's coming up. Coming up. That's a nice fish, but it's good. Yeah. Look at that. Cobia, dude. It's a Cobia. It's giant. You ain't got that much flesh, huh? No. Ooh. Shark. It's a shark. Man. No, I think you got shark, dude. You think it's a Cobia? Tell the Kobe. Like that, no? Why would the 50 pounder pull like that? I think, no, I don't know 50 pounds. Back home, that line, the that line. Second of Kobe, even before we set the boat, we can't see our face during the surf. That was, that, I mean, that felt like a Kobe yeah. though. Yeah, yeah, that's that's that, like, like a lot of times. It felt like a Kobe. I don't know, dude. I was trying to get him up as fast as possible. I didn't want him to uh, get sharks. Got a little J hook on there. Yesterday I was using a bigger hook. Dude, that is the weirdest thing. It's working against me today. This feet of water, the smaller like hook is working a lot better. Yeah. We're using live bait. I, I, I just tell everybody basically to get tight, stay tight. But with the cobia, you know, they have those backward facing bristles on their lips, much like a largemouth bass. They can be biting down. Their their bite pressure is so strong they can be biting down on that 60 pound or 80, 80, 80 pound uh, leader, and you're you're not hooked, even though the drag's going out. Um, yeah, so you, yeah, that's the that. one fish that you really have to set the hook on. Yeah. And I, I load the rod. I tell them, bend the rod. Once the rod's bent, then... Uh-oh. Coming up, coming up. Coming up. Give me the guy, give me the guy, give me the guy. Head shake. No! Pink fish. Pink fish? I'm telling you, bro. Yeah, but it was doing a head shake, like a cobia. Kingfish. The old Kingfish. Shark. I'm telling you. Oh my gosh. That's what it was. It went. Oh, okay. Yeah, look at the lines all shaped. Yeah, so what I like to do is I tell people to bend the rod, like load the rod. Yeah. A lot of times I'll, I'll be holding the rod and, and I'll say, hey, once you get tight, and they'll bend it just a little bit. I'm like, no, and I'll like double the rod. Tell them I really want to put bend in it. Once it's bent, I'll, I'll then I'll stick them. You know, I, I don't like to like people do the bass hook set where they, if you watch them, they go slack pull. Oh, yeah, yeah. You know, yeah, and, yeah, yeah, and that's yeah, the worst yeah. thing. I, I want the rod bent, then then do it. You know, so. And what, what the funny thing to uh, talk on that is when they, when they eat a live bait, you know, you let them eat it for usually a few seconds. And I'm coaching them through it while I'm up top. Well, they got the, the, the fish will eat the eel or whatever they eat. I actually put the poop in the opposite direction right. of the fish. So I he's off the bow, I put it in reverse. Just a little oh, bit to help him. Yeah. Really? So we get maximum tension while they set the hook. So nothing, you know, it's gonna be max pressure as soon as they come tight and they're not gonna give it any slack. Whenever I have a fish on, on anything, whether they're live baiting for kingfish or whatever, I'm always going the exact opposite direction because people like, if, if it's you or me, we, we know how to stay tight on the fish. Uh -huh. And and sometimes the fish swims at the boat and you can't retrieve the, the line fast enough. So I like to keep it, you know, tight. You know, but that's what I mean. If he's off the keep, bow, keep I go the, reverse. Oh, okay. Keep it opposite at all ways. Oh I mean, yeah, yeah. I guess you're right. You know, We're always a lot of times in the back. So yeah. But if you're casting in the bow, yeah, I, I get the, the same exact thing. Yeah. Yeah, like you're saying. And then every now and the then I forget to do that, and and we lose a fish or something. Because I come cases. right yeah, to the boat. Right. Yeah, yeah. They don't. They don't like getting stuck. We have different different runs. We we have like different times of year. We have mullet. We have pogies. And uh, when we use the mullet, um, when we're triple tail fishing, one of the things we start experimenting with is. Uh, is I use scissors, you know, some people like to bite the tail, I don't want to put it in my mouth, but so we uh, will like cut the peck fins and it causes the bait to do crazy things. It's just like, it's it's just like a, a really distressed bait and uh, sometimes it really works well. Hey, do you guys uh, get leatherback turtles up in your area? Uh, I get them in May for a little okay. bit, not, not all summer. Yeah, we get them. Yeah, yeah, we sure do. And loggerheads too. Yeah, we well, have the, loggerheads all the time. The leatherbacks are, are what we really, I mean like, certain times of year we get them it seems to coincide with when we get a lot of these jellyfish you know especially the we, we, I call them cannonball jellyfish yeah. I think one of the names is called cauliflower jellyfish yeah. but uh, I guess they eat those but um, you know leatherbacks I don't know if it's because of their dark black but but you know, there's almost always Kobe's on leatherbacks I agree I don't think I've ever seen a leatherback without them yeah 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 but it's unbelievable our loggerheads we, we they hold Kobe back home but it's like one out of three we blind cast them all that's, that's pretty good one out of three is 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 we catch i've caught one on a loggerhead yeah in me, my, me in my too career. yeah really i mean yeah. i was running by real fast and when, when i happened to see one on a, on a loggerhead and i spun around we caught it but 
people see them and they're like, oh, look, turtle. And I'm like, I don't even, I'm focused on something else and it's it's not worth it we, to me. Dude, even when we don't say we podcast. <laughs> yeah. I mean, there might be a little rat on the huh. bottom of it, but I mean, usually pretty pretty good chance. I wonder of why that is. I mean, like, we're like, because our, our area, we rarely ever see uh, Kobe on loggerhead turtles. Right. I um, think maybe because the loggerhead tends to tends to rise the surface and dive down more, you know. The leatherbacks are always just kind of cruising, you know. Well, yeah, the other that's... thing, the leatherbacks are probably, yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, they're like, yeah. I don't know, six, eight bigger. times bigger yeah. than, than a loggerhead. And, and I think because they're dark black, you know, they're, they're darker color. Do, right? I, I don't know. No, the loggerheads are so spooky compared to leatherbacks. Yeah. We I have agree. the long bomb. We come in at well, like... 15 miles an hour. Loggerheads, so once you see them stick their head up and look at you, they're going down right yeah. after. Yeah. 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 So, yeah, so I, I have I I have seen leatherbacks. I have seen leatherbacks here in Florida. I've seen only two in my life, and neither of them had Kobe on them. That's miserable. Yeah, crazy. Well, I've seen a few without Kobe as well. But I, I get excited. It's sort of like when we see a ray, you know, um, you're just yeah, pumped be because you, the there could be the potential's there for mm -hmm. it could be loaded with Kobe as but uh when they're on the rays like that, we, we see it occasionally on the manas when we do see them, or if we run up on a pod, we throw live baits first. We'll throw like three live baits. Huh. Don't set the hook. Just let the pod just keep swimming. And then once you have three that have eaten the live bait, then you take a bucktail. You throw the bucktail, you hook the fourth one up or whatever you got. They all spook, then you come tight on all the other rods. That's, well, the, that's how we get multiples at the same time the, like that. The, 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 the problem, like if we're trying to get keepers, is a lot of times those bigger ones or the smaller ones are way more aggressive than than, than the yeah, bigger ones. Yeah. And so, if it's nine times out of ten, the little guy's going to get your jig. So we try to assess what's going on first. Look at the the Kobe is where the Kobe is on the back. If there's no Kobe is on the on the back of the ray, we got to send something underneath it. Um, first a jig or something like that to see if something falls out. And if you can't really see, then I like to throw a croaker or some kind of live bait in front of the ray, ten feet, and let mm -hmm. it go down. But uh, like you guys probably do the same thing. Like I mean, if you see a pack of cobias, you can tease the small fish away while somebody yeah. throws back to the big fish. Yeah, we've done that a couple times. We haven't seen a cobia in about an hour. It's really, really snotty and windy and nasty out here. We got we caught two co two keepers yesterday. We got them filleted. So I think it's time to go into the catch and cook challenge or the cooking challenge. Everyone's got their own recipe here. We're gonna head back to the dock, get everything ready. Me and Preston are gonna go and get all the supplies for cooking. Then we're gonna have a cook-off, guys. I don't know who's gonna win this. I got, I got, a, I got a few bets going, but uh, everyone's got a different recipe. We're gonna cook cobia five different ways, so stay tuned. Two full days of cobia fishing. The cobia challenge is complete. We caught in total seven cobia. Dennis and me were tied for the most two apiece. Carl and Austin were tied for biggest cobia. I don't know what what, what was that? 22, 23 pounds, some of that. They're 25, 26 pounders. They're yeah. getting bigger every day. Yeah. I was unanimous. <laughs> every day. Unanimous, the small cobia. Yeah, uh, Scott won the smallest cobia. I was trying to beat him. There was a little ding like this big around the boat, but he was not eating my shrimp. He, he wanted he wanted that big bucktail that was twice the size that he was. Preston was the only person to not catch cobia. I think I wanted to go old school, man. I, he was throwing his, his old school bucktails. I tried to go old school, man. Y'all were out there with live bait. It's all good, though. I had a lot of fun. Dude, lot we of had fun. a lot of fun. We had a lot of fun. Speaking of cobia, if you guys ever want to go on a cobia trip, let's start from the right here. If you're in Cape Canaveral or you're in Orlando or anywhere you want to go with Scott Lum, make sure you check him out. Link is in the description. If you're in the Destin area, Captain Preston, Golf Anger Charters, check him out. If you're in the Palm Beach area, you want to hit up Carl, Cap Captain Carl from uh, Slob City. Dennis isn't the captain. He's he's thinking about it, so you might you might want to check him out in a little bit. And then we got we got Captain Austin here from from uh, Virginia. If you guys are in Virginia, you want to catch Giant Cobia, that's your guy. We had a lot of fun. Make sure you guys go and follow these guys on social media. Their links are in the description. Hope you guys enjoyed this video, and we'll see you next time. Black Tip H Fishing is brought to you by Frog Tongs, designed for you, created for the outdoors, and Sudacore Nutrition.